Hello, I am Aura. I am one of the weapon developers for Battle Talent. I am also a Discord modemus. I'm going to be going over how to make a basic non-scaled weapon. If you have any questions, go ahead and join the Discord and we'll be happy to help you there. So, without further ado, let's go! We're going to run through the basics, get everything done. First thing you're going to need is the Unity Hub. Just go to the description, hit the Unity Hub, hit install, then run that installer. Then you're going to need the correct version of Unity. So again, link to the description, it's the top one right here, hit install, that will open the Unity editor, then you can go ahead and install stuff like Android support, if you didn't see how to get that, we're also going to show it again here, you can go here, add modules, then Android support, if you don't have that, you should get that. Then you're going to need the mod proj, so just go, again, description, code, download zip, download that. Then you're going to need to go to Sketchfab, that's what most modders use for models. So I'm going to use this model here. So once, you know, your model's good, just hit download. Um, we're a bit high on the tries, the recommended limit is 30k, but this works. So just hit download. We like to use FBX. Go ahead and open the folder. And you're going to need to extract that. Once that's extracted, you can just go to source, and this will be a model. So we're going to put this into Blender. File import fbx go ahead and find your model so ours is really big and we don't have any textures we're going to fix that in unity so what i'm going to do is just rotate this so it's easier for me to work on easier to show you guys stuff all right now that's ready we're going to go into edit mode just by hitting tab and we need to select parts of the model so we need to select the blade from you know the handles the guard so just hit z and then hit wireframe that'll let you select every vertical so now that we have everything separated um, I'm going to show you why we need to separate stuff and also how to do it so here we need to just select the area we need gone so we need this to just be the bigger handle and the smaller butt end so select everything you want then hit P and then selection so the reason why we need to separate the model is because mesh colliders tend to make boxes. They'll just go over places instead of perfectly fitting that collider. So this one would look fine, but if we didn't disconnect it, it would look like that with a weird triangle. Uh, same for that circle there. Uh, so, so we'll just separate those apart so we get good colliders. Um, here we see we'll get a little line if we don't separate the blade more. So we're going to just select the area that we need gone. Then again, P, selection. And now it should be good. You could, you know, split it here if you wanted to, but it's not much of an issue. So we're going to work with this. So again, we've got our blade, our bit selected, so those will have good colliders, everything else. So now you can just hit File, Export, FBX, whatever you want to name it. I'm going with Example and Export. Now in Unity, we're going to make a new template. So, template wizard, we have all of this. We're going to run through all of the config stuff later, so you can just ignore that. We're going to call it example, and then create. So, if you look through build, you'll find your folder. So again, there it is, example, click that. Weapon, icon, config, all that stuff. Now, we're going to need a folder in the resources to put all your models, your textures, everything like that. I already created one here, so we've got example. If you don't have one, well, you're going to need to make one, so just do right-click, create folder. Now, in the folder, we're going to grab our textures, put that all in there, and then our model, again, in there. Now, an example, we can go to our weapon, click it, and here we already have an example. This doesn't have meshes or anything, but this does show stab objects, which we will be reworking later. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our resource folder. So here it is. We're going to grab our model, we're going to put in our model. Now you'll see here ours is too big and also rotated weird, so first we're going to rotate that. 90 degrees should work here, yep. Then we're going to shrink that, but for now we're just going to turn this off. If you would like something like a gun, you can click or axe. Next up is our models, so we're going to hit right click, create, material. Then we're going to get our you know base color, our emission, our metallic, our AO, normal, everything like that roughness so click your material just drag and drop then you can put your material on everything 
All right, now that our material's done, you can see this all looks really nice. So we're going to go ahead and select everything. Now, since all of this needs a collider, just select everything, add component, mesh collider, make sure you set that to is convex. And there you go, we have colliders. So you can see here, I didn't cut this very well, but so we'll only have a small triangle where we can actually put stuff through, but it works. Except for here and over here. Next, we're going to do our mount attach and our attach line. All right, so first our mount attach, that normally just goes on the hilt. Uh, it's just where it'll slot, you know, on the hip, on the back. Just put it on the hilt, should work good. Now our attach line, we're gonna put that in the middle of the handle. So around here, and then you can set your start end point and uh, start point. So, as you can see, it points out a bit, so we're just going to lower this, probably about half, same for the other side. Uh, that'll just change, you know, which end points out more, as you can see, smaller, so we can put it back in place. Then we need to set our model to a interact layer, so just click our model, layer, default, normally, then interact, and now it'll work correctly. So if you'd like to do two, two attach lines, you would just control D to duplicate the first one, click on the second one, drag the first one into the dependency object, just so... The second one will appear when you're holding the first one. Then go into your attach list and add your second attach line. So we'll just drag that into there. And then you need to click allow second hand. But since it's a small one-handed sword, we're just going to remove the first one. So starting with this stab example, I like to just go from this. So you need to get your stab open. So this is a stab because it's set to negative one. Uh, slices are normally zero. Now move this tab to the base of the handle. Once it's in the right position, you can go ahead and mess with the width and the geo forward distance. So that's just how far it goes. So if you need to change the forward distance, you would change down below forward. About here, it's a bit much, so we're going to lower it to maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.9. This works well. So now we need to mess with that red and that black line. So that's going to be, you know, your start and your uh, end, your min, min and max. So, max, that is just how far the entire line goes. So, that's normally just the negative version of the forward distance. So, you know, negative 0.9. And then the min, you need to eyeball normally, but it's just make that little red line point out a bit more than the blade normal. So, something like this. This will work great. Now, for that little red ball, that needs to go normally where you just want the stab to like stop, where you want it to even out. So around here, this works great. All right, now for the stab, we're just going to duplicate it, and we're going to make these side objects zero and no stab out. So you just need to mess with your rotations. Make sure that the geo forward is pointing the same way as the blade. So we do that here, and then just move it somewhere around the middle if it's just a straight blade. If it's not, you'll just need to make more cuts or more cut objects. Change your forward distance. This looks about right. Width, we need that to be longer to cover the whole blade. So we're going to have to move this over a bit. All right, now it's the same as last time, but we need to rotate it a bit just so it fits nicely, follows the blade. Now that that's done, then we can work on our min, max, and our tie again. So our, again, step minimum, you just need to mess with that until it points out from the blade a little bit. And then our max is our forward distance, but negative. And then stab tie, again, just where it meets. So something around halfway, that's about right. And now our stab will work. All right, so now we're gonna work on our adjustables. Just hit Control Shift D to open this up. So normally it'll be set to WMD and we need to put ours into here and put in our prefix. So first thing, copy the name or just write it down. Then your prefix, I like to do aura underscore. Now you'll see we need to put a folder into here. So I like to have common just for our scripts and then Ours, so just example. Now that that's in there, you just go ahead, hit clear addressables and create and refresh. So you see this error down here, that's fine. We're gonna fix that now. So go over, you're going to need to copy your weapon name. So ours is just or underscore example. Then put that into here, bam. Then you can put in your name, put in your description. All right, once your config is, config is done, you can just go back into your weapon. We're going to need to set a few things like durability. We're just going to go, you know, I like to do negative one for infinite because I don't really care about durability. But we'll just go 100 to make it feel, you know, breakable, but still good. Next up, you know, you got your collision effect and your ragdoll. Um, since this is a weapon, you're just going to do collision effect weapon and ragdoll will be 
sword. I will have something linked in the description that will help with that. Next up, our enchant level. Just do something like 100. That'll work fine. Then our icon. So first thing, delete the icon in there if there's one already. Then what I like to do is I'll right-click. I will show in folder, icon, and then I'll copy the address where our icon folder is. Then we can just delete that. Go to tools, and then open up our icon generator. Drag in our prefab. Then we're going to mess with this until it looks nice. Hit save PNG. Then you're going to click back up here, put in your icon or your address, hit save, then close. So you see, you won't see anything here, but if you open it back up, icon is there, close this, and it'll be back again. So again, Control Shift D, clear addressables, clear addressables, error should be gone. Your icon will have something around the same as your weapon. Then we're going to want to change the max size of the image, just 128, that works great, just so it won't cause lag when loading in. So now, you're going to file, build, player settings, then you just need to change your product name. This is just what the uh, folder will look like, so un aura underscore example, I like this, so bam, close, close, then we can just hit build all bundles, if you have Android, you will have quest support, and then once this is done building, this will take long because it's the first time. Once it's done building, you can go to your mods. So it'll be right above resources. Click that. It'll show up here. So this is what it'll look like in the file explorer. Then you can just put this into the quest or your computer. So here, you can see stats work. A cuts work. And everything's looking nice. And 